1992 begins, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, on the harp, with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your works. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold your enemies, O Lord. For behold your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. Mark, we are here today thanking God for what he has done in your life. And Psalm 92 sets the stage perfectly. You were on a slippery slope with the wicked and the senseless man. You were headed to eternal destruction. Your home was a little taste of hell. There was drunkenness, abuse, shame, chaos. You name it, it was there. Your life showed where your lead was. You had to focus on your stepfather because it meant survival not only for yourself as the oldest, but also for your mom and your five siblings. You were always on high alert for how to navigate the outrage of a man fighting his own demons in all the wrong ways. It has never been just about you. It has always been about your family's survival. If one of you suffered, all of you suffered. You were angry, you were empty, and you were a fighting machine because your lead was your stepfather. He was your trainer. Verses 10 and 11 of Psalm 92 say, but my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. God plugged you out of the hell that you were in out of that demolition derby back here and he brought you to your perfect heavenly father's heart and your focus changed your perfect father lifted your head he poured his love over you and he nourished your starving soul he took your angry hurting empty heart and transplanted his heart into you a heart full of love compassion and empathy he gave you a new identity your heart cares for people even the one that did unspeakable things to you your heart has the spaciousness and grace for not giving up on people because you see them through Jesus's eyes you don't throw people under the bus even when they throw you under the bus with your focus on your perfect father, your fighting arena changed. You face fear every day of your life. So I don't think you were ever in the safe boat on the water with your get out of hell free card, taking care of the dailies yourself. You were all in fighting the good fight of faith out on the water with Jesus. You have had faithful mentors all the way along, from Guam to Chico to Portland to Bellevue to Westminster Chapel to Antioch Bible Church. We praise God for those men and women and those families for pouring into you. You 
are all in. You are disciplined. You sit at Jesus' feet every day, week in and week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, through all the seasons. When things are flourishing and blooming in abundance, or when things are bleak and frozen and seemingly dead. And that has made all the difference. You are intentional. You are purposeful in building relationships and encouraging people. You are purposeful in the work to be done, whether it's physical work, or, but particularly relational work. Whether it's in our home, at church, on your day off, on vacation, or when the telemarketer calls. You bring comfort to the sick and the dying. You are untiring. I keep telling you, you work circles around 10 men and then wonder why in the world you can, can't get more done. Then you succumb to your internal nine o'clock lights out clock. You often pray, thank you, Lord, for giving us such a relaxing day. Several years into this verbiage of relaxing day, I finally was able, in my exhausted state, to mutter, what exactly do you mean by relaxing? And you said, I am no man's slave. I have the strength and the capacity to work. There is work to be done. I am a blessed man. Indeed, we are blessed. It is a relaxing day. You have a song in your heart. Now sitting by you in church, we may not think that as much because the, 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 the tones can change and the rhythm may be off, but you're always humming at home. You hum in the garden, you hum at work, and it's a beautiful sound. You are connecting to the heart of God. You are not a man of pretense. What you see is what you get. These are but a few of the things that I love about you. I believe the bottom line of your life is encouraging and challenging people to reorient their focus onto Jesus Christ. Away from this demolition derby back here, away from their fears, their brokenness and shame away from isolation, choosing to be vulnerable. I think your heart is always asking, where is your focus? To those who do not know Jesus or know him in name only, you're saying, look up, look up, come to Jesus, take off your blinders. Oh, come to the perfect father who will give you true life. To the distracted and undisciplined and complacent, you are saying, wake up, take off your blinders. Where's your focus? Come, let us help you get some clarity. Don't continue to stagnate in your fears and brokenness. Are you walking in your new identity? Where is your focus? To those knocked to the ground and just going through the motions you're saying, Oh, there is courage and joy in Jesus. There is strength in him. Will you let us come alongside? He can help you thrive. Where is your focus? You have wooed me. You've called me out of my hiding, out of my own brokenness and my own shame. I have also had to put on those gloves and knock you out a few times to reorient you from unknowingly continuing the destructive patterns inherited in demolition derby from your stepfather. And I still see both of us growing and maturing into our new identity, and I praise God for that. I'm not sure how the days have piled up so fast to make us old in years, but here we are, on to the next stage of life just before antiquity steps in. The ending of Psalm 92, beginning with verse 12. 
The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. God is not finished with you, Mark Webster. I love you, babe.